Hey guys, and welcome to my patch notes review for the Glim Life Update. I thought I would start the video off in front of this sign that someone made for me when we made the club. I haven't been over here in a while. <laughs> um, but this is a very, very, very big patch, so uh, I'm going to try it and blow through this, because I don't want to spend another 40 minutes making this video uh, like the last time I we had a big update. So, starting out, the player marketplace. Um, by the way, I just had coffee, so if I talk very fast, I am sorry. I am, I'm trying to blow through this. <laughs> um, so... Uh, I'm not going to read the patch notes word for word because they go on, you know, they, they do their run-on sentences and everything. So this is the new marketplace. You can search specific things if you want. Like you can say allies, uh, take off the name. Um, I was just, I did an example before the video. Uh, and then search. This will show you all the allies. You can also just click any and then type in the allies. So if I want cookie uh, baker bot, I could just type in cookie baker and I can see them without having to go into the allies. Um, you can also only trade Flux, Glim, KHS, Isaac, Cthulhu, Dragon Coins, and Pentaforge Souls. Those are the currencies that you can use in the marketplace. You can also hide collected. So if I click hide collected, uh, it'll say no results found because I already have the Cookie Baker bot and it's not going to show me them. Um, so this is the buy section. Um, for the most part, people are only going to sell stuff for Flux. So you should only really try to buy for Flux. Of course, uh, there might be like one random person that tries to sell for Dragon Coins or something. But uh, hardly anybody's going to do that. So... Uh, most of the time, just use any, and then it'll always show you flux, and then if some random person does decide to sell for, like, Dragon Coins or Pentaforce Souls, it'll show you that as well. Um, so that is the buy section. So here's the sell section. Uh, so again, you can only sell for those materials that I already said. Uh, you can you have to specify the price. So if you want to sell something, this is going to be, like, a quick tip. So here is the uh, trading guide that everyone has been asking me for half a year. So uh, if you have, say, the Cookie Baker bot that you want to sell, this is just an example. Um, search for it, see how much people are selling it for. So 220 flux, that's actually a little overpriced. They should only go for 200 flux at max and then 100 on average. So this is a little overpriced. I would sell for 200 flux. So, but this is an example. You look, you see it's 220. You say you want to undercut them. So you sell your item a lot quicker than them. You would undercut them by, you know, one flux you can do. You can do by 10 flux. Uh, don't be a, don't be dumb and undercut people buy a lot like you see in a lot of other games things go for you know a hundred thousand flux and people will be selling them for 20k flux uh that's that's like a rude way to do it of course you sell your item but then you just lower the market on purpose and you're purposefully ruining everyone else's you know flux making and that's just don't do it i come from a 10 years worth of mmo experience i know how it works um but here is the tabs. Of course, you just drag an item in. So I just have some random golden sea shells. I want to sell them, you know, uh, 500, no, 250 flux. So that will be uh, five flux each. Uh, actually, that's more than that. But, you know, who cares? Actually, no, that is, I'm dumb. I don't know. I Again, I took coffee, so my brain is just like going, going, going. I can't think. <laughs> um, so, yeah, let's just say 20 flux. Okay, so four flux each. Uh and I create, there we go. So now I have a five golden seashells listed for four flux each at 20 flux. Uh, you don't, so if I wanna sell them for four flux each, don't type four in, it's not gonna put four times five for you. Uh, you have to specify the exact amount you wanna sell, the full stack for, sorry, sorry about that. Um, you can also cancel for free, which is good. Uh, you just sold five golden seashells for 20 flux each. Of course, I, I posted them for very cheap. I would just, you know, I'm showing you an example. Um, so let's exit the marketplace, go back in, go to sell, and now sold. So I claim, and I just got 20 flux in my inventory, as you can see. Uh, I did also make a video before this, which was like 40 minutes long. That's why I want to speed through this one. So if you see these, uh, wait for a little bit until I explain them. <laughs> um... So here are the tabs. There are three pages of tabs, which means, you know, six times three is uh, 20, 24. Um, I hope that's right. Uh, so you can see you can buy them for either uh, 2,500 cubits each or 200 credits. Uh, it's going to be pretty cheap to buy them for credits. That's probably why they made them so cheap. So people would do that, to be honest. But uh, if you're going to buy them for cubits, it's going to be about two to three months worth of cubits. Uh, saved up to get all the pages. You don't need all. I would say six is more than enough because again, you're going to be selling and buying like constantly, so you're not going to need too many spaces. I would get around six. That's that's perfect, um, in my opinion. If you're wondering how many you should buy instead of wasting all your cubits on something that you wouldn't need, um, 
But, you know, to each, to each his own, some people might trade, you know, 24 items at a time. I don't know who would do that, but, you know, there's might be someone out there. Um, but remember, you are always buying and selling constantly, so you don't need... If you have 24 items to sell, you can sell 6 at a time and, you know, sell everything you have within an hour. Uh, so, you, again, you don't need 24 slots just because you have 24 items. Um, I'm just making sure everyone knows that before uh, they start spending a bunch of money and qubits on something that they don't need. So, the Trove of Wonders is available... Um, for one full stack of flux from Merchant of Marvels on the new Golden Ship Vendors in Treasure Isles. Earn fragments of wonder in these boxes and use them to buy new flasks and emblems. Uh, these boxes contain a variety of items including the fragments of wonder uh, and may also contain many brand new very rare mountain wings. The F4ST prototype rocket. So that is a rocket that I believe if you press space you ascend. Like you don't have to jump 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 and then hold uh, space to do it. I think you just you know jump once hold space to take out your mount or you can just press Z and then you press space and I think you just ascend on you know on command and then you press probably W to go down kind of like wings. Um, but again you can't go higher with wings you can only go down i believe that is what that is for uh, i don't know 100 percent though because i don't have it obviously uh, but this is the new golden ship before i move on i want to show you that this is the new gold ship that you buy them from and that is the cell in case you are uh wondering what the cell looks like it's like a it's the trove of wonders it's a mysterious face <laughs> um and here is the box for 10k flux. But let's continue on with the uh, drops. So Hadori, the promise of spring. That is kind of like a peacock or something. It's like a bird. <laughs> um, that when you walk, flowers spring up behind you. Uh, it is only a visual effect. If you run over the flowers, it is not going to give you glim. So keep that in mind. This is probably the worst of the mounts, I would say. It is actually the worst of the mounts if you're going to count like um, efficiency of what you should use. Uh, so that is kind of like the bottom, and we're going to go up in usefulness. So the next one is Alori of the North Wind. That is the bird that where you, if you go on water, it'll turn into ice, so you can walk on water. However, it is useless again, because you have boats which go faster anyways, and they already are hover over water. So uh, that is the next one up from like uselessness. <laughs> and then Kaburi, the Fire Tamer. That one, whenever you walk over lava, you uh, turn it into earth. Um, in my opinion, it's a little bit more useful, but um, I can see some trolling with it in Shadow Arenas where people can run over the lava that people are trying to use for uh, killing the bosses. Of course, you could just kick the person, but uh, again, I can see that happening uh, if people don't know how to kick. Like, I used to not know how to kick people, so I would have probably been stuck with it <laughs> if, this was, if this was out before I knew. Um, so keep that in mind. I probably just introduced it into the game, to be honest, because probably no one would have thought of that because... You know, not many people are trolls, I guess. <laughs> um, but yes, I can see that. Um, and finally, Ganda the Sky Shepherd. This is the one that I find, like, kind of the only useful, but obviously the most useful. So this one is a golden uh, peacock or whatever they are. And then whenever you jump, the land beneath you, or the air, my bad, it's not land. You can't jump on land. Or I guess you can, but you know what I mean. <laughs> um, the air beneath you turns into gold. And then say, say I'm on my mount. Forget my wings. Say I'm on my mount. On my mount. I am running right now. If I'm on that golden thing, it'll turn everything underneath me into gold, even the land in front of you if you walk forward. So, this mount is amazing. <laughs> it defeats the purpose of um, dragons and jump and all that. So, this is the mount you want to be going after. It is very, 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 very useful. Probably everyone's going to use it if they have it uh, because there's no point in anything else, <laughs> to be honest, because it saves you a whole stat and you know, the need to go for dragons. Um, but moving on, Turtle Tank and Royal Turtis are the two new turtles. Uh, the Royal Tank, uh, or the Royal Turtis, I think goes faster, kind of like a boat in water, but it is a mount. Um, I think they go slower on land, like 75 instead of 90, so keep that in mind as well. They just go fast in water, not on land. Um, and then the Turtle Tank is in between a boat and a dragon for its uh, Brock block breaking uh, usefulness um the turtle tank will break blocks faster than a boat but less than a dragon so it's kind of like a middle ground and again it moves at 75 percent uh, or 75 on land so keep that in mind it is a slow mount and then finally the radical rainbow wings those are wings that are just like a rainbow and <laughs> the rainbow themed um also this week so let's go into welcome train 
This week, you get two Dragon Souls for your first challenge of the day. That is a five-point tier that you do for your first uh, day, and you can see, like, up here, it would say Daily Dragon Soul. Instead of what you get to now. Um, for this week, there are extra Skyrim rewards, increased drop rate for the Nimbus Mount, Radiant Shards, and Radiant Lockboxes. So, if you go to the Sky Realm, you have a better chance at Nimbus. Uh, you get more shards and more Radiant Lockboxes from Radiant Giants. Uh, Shadow's Eve. So, let's go to the hub real quick. Okay, so once you're at the hub, uh, you can see it has a new theme. Um, it is themed after the Shadow's Eve. Uh, if you want to explore it, just go to the hub and you can see there's new buildings and stuff like that. Also, if you come over here, is the the Shadow Market isn't over there anymore. It's over here now. Or uh, whatever they're called. The Shadowy Station, not the Shadow Market. <laughs> um, and these guys, you can now get candy corn from doing layers. Let's see, where does it say it? Okay, so created by Stedums and Tribe, these give two candy corn per layer in addition to normal rewards. So these are Shadow of Eve pumpkin layers. Layers mean the three star uh, dungeons in adventure biomes. The three stars give you two candy corn per layer. So that I'm assuming it's only the three star boss, not the two one stars on the way there. So uh, you can get, that's how you farm candy corn the uh, in-game way. You can also get candy corn from Autumn Pinatas. Uh, they give three to the thrower and one to any player in range. So if you want to buy your way to uh, Samantha and the Sammy out, you can. But uh, in game ways, you just go to uh, Adventure Worlds and do the three star uh, pumpkin layers that are, you can, I'm assuming they're very, very, very blatant <laughs> in finding them. Again, these guys, this is what Candy Corn is used for. This has been in the game since the first Shadows Eve event. And these have a chance to give you uh, the Sam Mount, or Sam Mounta, which is a mount, and then the Samantha uh, pet, if you haven't bought it. I'm assuming no one, probably 80% of people haven't achieved it the real way, which is the Nightmare Mystery Box way. They've only bought it from the players that have been in since uh, the early beta. Um, so that is how you officially earn it in game if you haven't bought it already um moving on to game updates let's go to the uh, club world so i can kind of show it off a little better critical hit replaces the knockback stat on items so uh every stat or every piece of item can roll knockback on the third slot i i am pretty sure the face and uh hat can i don't know 100 because i i don't roll uh i haven't rolled knockback I, there's never a need but i am certain that you can do it on your hat and face. I'm not 100% though, so don't quote me on that. But at least your weapon and your ring, um, so you can see this weapon has critical hit on the third stat, because that used to be knockback before the patch, uh, and it turns into critical hit. There's no more knockback stat um, that you can get. Uh, oh, here's the what I was talking about. Daily bonus, Moonwing Dragon Soul. You can see it's checkmarked already, because I already did it early this morning. Uh, instead of one, you'd get be getting two, since this is the last week. Um, but getting back on topic, you can see there's no more knockback in your stat sheet. Uh, it is now critical hit, and there's critical damage. Um, so critical hit gives you a chance to land a critical every time you do an attack. Uh, I need to test out. Again, I kind of just logged in and did this video. I haven't tested it out yet. I don't know if 61 is 61%. percent um, obviously assuming that's not. Uh, I'm assuming probably 100, per 100 crit is probably like 10% crit. I, I, again, I don't know. I would have to test it out after this video, and I can update you guys. But 61 crit on uh, this staff, you can see. Um, you can also get it on rings. Do not do this. Uh, a lot of people are trading, you know, for S4 knockback rings before the patch. There's no point in doing that, because uh, then you are taking off energy regen. And energy regen is 100%. So say the Ice Age, your right click, does 3 times damage. That is 300%. Instantly, and it stacks. So if you have uh, 200 critical hit damage, that is going to stack on top of the three times damage and give you, you know, five times damage every time you land a crit. Um, that means if you can't regen energy and you are gimping your attack speed, because if you don't know, energy regen uh, ultimately determines your attack speed because uh, you you spam your abilities and then if you run out of energy, you have to wait a second to to press it again unless you regain your energy through like a flask. Um, and that is meaning that you're dropping your attack speed by half because you're waiting a second to do another attack. Um, that's why energy regen is so powerful in this game. Um, it's actually very overpowered. <laughs> um, and if you're taking that off for critical hit chance, 
you are gimping your damage by a lot. So don't do that. Don't get on your rings. Uh, listen to a person that has been doing this for 10 years straight. <laughs> um, don't do this. Uh, stick with your energy regen rings. Um, again, I've been doing this for a very long time. Um, and I am telling you that it is not worth it. I have I already done tests and stuff like that with this one. Um, but critical damage. If you could get, if you could have got critical damage on your rings, that would have been worth it. But critical chance, no. Uh, but critical damage is now a new stat. It doesn't replace anything like knockback. Um, it is a new stat that can roll on your second and fourth slots, and I'm pretty sure that is any slot. It's not like knockback where it's maybe on your head and face. I know 100% it's on every single slot. Um, so that is worth it on your hat and face. You take off health regen. Health regen is very, very, very. Uh, underwhelming stat. Health regen barely does anything in this game, to be honest. Uh, is very poor. So take that off for critical damage. Yes, critical damage. Uh, like now. Once you see this video, change all your gear. Take that health regen off. It is useless in this game. Health regen is very, very poor. Get critical damage. Um, also, you can see this. I'll tell you about that in a second once we get there. Um, so use the adventurer. So that's that's the gear. I'm giving you guys tips right now in this video so I don't have to make a guide later. Um, don't get critical hit on your rings. Go critical damage on everything else as well. Um, except for maybe your weapon. I have to test if critical damage is better than attack speed, but I am certain it is not. Uh, only replace your health regen as of right now for uh, critical damage. And then obviously your weapon should have, instead of jump, like you can see on my staff, I should get critical hit on my staff. Your staff, or you know, your weapon in general, should be mostly the only part where you get critical hit on. Um, but moving on, uh, where is it? Flux storage, okay. So the uh, Adventurer's Crafting Bench, you can now craft these guys, the Mega Flux tanks. Uh, so they are worth 10k flux. You spend 75 glim on them, but in my opinion, it is worth it because that's, you know, like 20 or 30 two glim or whatever uh or flux i mean you pay 32 flux and then you can stack well 10,000 into one uh tank uh this depends this isn't for everybody if you only have 10,000 flux or if you only have 20,000 flux even if you only have five or 50,000 flux i would not do this because then you're just wasting flux that's only taking five slots but if you're like me and you have 300k flux <laughs> uh, this is very 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 uh valuable for um space so as you can see, I have 28, that's 280k flux, and you can uh, trade them back for your flux back. You don't waste any flux, like you spend 9,999 and you get 9,999 back. Um, so that is how you can save space if you have, again, I would say 100k or more flux. Because um, it saves a lot of space in your stash. Um, so that is that. This week, chaos chests include a very rare, but not as rare as the tradable ones. Uh, chaos coin so right now or before this patch you could have got chaos coins uh, At a very 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 low drop chance later the rarest item in the entire game um, That's why they're worth so much You could have got them, but again, they're the rarest thing in the game now. They are much much more common They're still rare, but a lot more common than what they are, but they're non tradable So you have a higher chance at getting more chaos factor but uh, again, it's you can't trade them. So it's just to give you chaos factor um, also, you can get the Tome of Wonders, which is a new tome that gives you two uh, Trove of Wonders. It's a legendary tome. It's not as much as, say, the Chaos Codec, if you want to sell the Tome of Wonders, but you probably won't, or you probably can't, because, uh, you know, they're 10,000 from the vendor anyways. So it's most likely more valuable than the Chaos Codex, even though this is a guaranteed 35k flux. This one gives you two chances for free which is valued at 20k flux, so it's a little less, but you have a chance at getting super rare mounts, which could give you a lot more <laughs> flux. But if you, so if you wanna go the safe route, use the Chaos Codex. If you wanna go the uh, lucky route, go the Writings of Wonder, which is the new Tome of Wonders. Um, you can also get that from the Chaos Chest this week, again. Um, plus other goodies. I don't know what the other goodies is, but those are the two main things that I wanted to explain. Uh, the trading posts, community chests, and club chests now require Master Rank 5 to use. This is to prevent, you know, people coming into your club at Master Rank 2 and uh, stealing everything from your club chests. Uh, also, it prevents uh, bots, again, um, from scamming or gold sellers. They have to reach Master Rank 5 instead of 2 now, so it's 3 levels more, but, you know, that does prevent some uh, gold sellers, but most likely not uh from trading because if you're selling gold you need to keep your business and 
uh, getting mass rank 5 to keep your business is, <laughs> is a good idea. Um, but yes, that is the new uh, update for that. Shadow Cache, Shaper's Dream, Shaper's Vision, Chaos Chest, and Trouble of Wonders now build up towards a guaranteed rare item after opening 70 boxes to make up for the chance for rare results from lock boxes has been reduced slightly. So, uh, in general, so they kind of went out of order. Uh, they didn't explain this before this thing. <laughs> um, so, in general, rare drops from, say, the Dragon Caches, Shadow Caches, Adventures, Chess are rarer. They're harder to get. Um, they probably listened to what I said last week. I'm not going to take credit for it, though. But they probably listened to how I was saying they're just giving everybody everything in the game and they don't care. Um, so, say if you want a Digsley, it's going to be harder to get a Digsley now. But... Uh, if so, this one you can use key. So this is an example. Digsley is just going to be rarer in general. You you're just it's going to be harder to get Digsley. Uh, of course, this is a poor example because he's not much flux, but this is an example nonetheless. So in general, Digsley is going to be harder because uh, you can use a golden key on it. So uh, that's kind of like a pay to win feature. They're just you know, I I've already explained it. I'm not going to explain it anymore because uh, I don't want to upset the two people that I'm going to upset. <laughs> uh, same thing with adventure mounts. They're going to be a little harder. But of course, you can just pay money and get them. Uh, but again, in general, they're going to be harder to get. But Shadow Caches, you can see there's a lock on it. There's no key. This, so I have 100. Uh, my 70th one is going to guarantee me a rare. Of course, I can still get a rare before the 70th, and it's not going to affect this, uh, this karma, they're calling it. So you can get, you know, a rare at 35 boxes opened, but once you hit 70, you are guaranteed another rare. So uh, that is to make up, again, for the slight chance at, or the reduced chance at rares. Same thing with the dragon caches. Every 70, you're going to be guaranteed either 10 souls or 5 dragon coins. Um, same with the uh, Trove of Wonders, which is, you know, 700k worth, but it's still, you know, you're guaranteed a rare after 700k, so that's good. Chaos chests as well, if effects, because you can't use uh, golden keys on cash chest and shapers dreams and Shap shapers visions so after 70 shapers visions you're guaranteed a penta or actually yeah you're guaranteed a penta after 70 uh, of course it's going to take a very long time before you open up 70 that's like two months worth of uh weeklies but still it is a guaranteed penta after two months um which is good again i don't like how they just are kind of making the game a little bit more pay to win but uh they're you know that's only for a few boxes. The most valuable boxes give you that 70 uh, box karma, is what they're calling it. Um, so that's actually great. Again, only really the adventure mounts and the miner's troves uh, is pay to win, but who cares about those anyways? <laughs> uh, so club world logs will now show when non-terrain blocks are destroyed in club worlds. This is amazing, because if you guys don't know, when I first made the club, I accidentally left this overnight, the first night. As an architect, I forgot to make it to Officer, and we had the Skyrim portal, and someone stole it. <laughs> so I had to make another one, uh, which is, you know, a lot of materials. Like, if you want to see how many materials it costs to make a uh, a Skyrim portal, we can see right here. The Builder's one. So, yes, that was 2k Infinium, 500 bottles, 500 fairy dust, gone. And then I had to double that, so I spent 4k Infinium, 1k bottles, 1k fairy dust, which is not cheap. That's like 40k flux right there. Um, or more than that. So, uh, now, if someone has broken it, like, if this was back in the day, I would have seen exactly who broke the Skyrim portal, because it's going to tell you. Uh, before this update, it would just say, you know, uh, underrated, broke 3,000 blocks, and placed down 2,000 blocks. In that 3,000 blocks, I could have taken out the Skyrim portal. It just won't specify. It just says how many blocks you broke. Now it specifies, so that is amazing i don't know why they haven't had this in the game since the beginning because this has been an issue for a very long time but it is now fixed which i am glad so any future clubs can't do with what i did <laughs> or had to deal with um so great i love that one uh shadow tower floors now have three arenas uh down from four so instead of five total uh floors because the boss is not counted uh the boss is its own floor now there's four total floors so you go three and then the boss which equals four instead of four and then the boss which was five so it's a little easier to farm the bosses but uh it kind of reduces how many uh shadow shards you get because every floor gives you shadow shards with one reduced um you get less but you have a higher chance at killing or you have frequently more chance at killing boss if that was correct that was not correct grammar but you know what i'm talking about <laughs> you have a higher chance at those mounts and stuff um 
So moving on, Dragon Mount projectiles now have a longer cooldown. So great, <laughs> this this is what I was talking about last week as well. Uh, I talked about how annoying the dragons are when you're a streamer and a YouTuber and everyone just tries to blow you up. <laughs> now once you use your dragon, you have to wait a second to uh, fire again. So just spam firing someone to the bottom of the world, which is great in my opinion. It yeah, it hurts the people that mine with dragons, but who mines with dragons anyways? <laughs> um, so, uh, great. Uh, I love that one as well, because, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, Trove Store added a new big deal that will sometimes show up in the store for $30. Uh, that includes credits on a big pile of Shaper's Vision. Let's see if I got it. Nope. Um, let me get that, though. So, it's just a $30 deal. You know, it's going to be in between the 20 and the 50 uh, It's going to be a new one that has a chance at the new Trove's. Um, or Shaper's Visions, not the new Troves. Shaper's Visions, uh, which are the good ones. So, you know, spend 30 bucks and you get a big pile of Pentas. It's not guaranteed Penta, but you know what I'm talking about. You have a chance to have a big pile of Pentas uh, for real life money, but you know, who cares? It doesn't affect my gameplay. Uh, for a limited time, Cycle Mounts are now 50% off. So, uh, Cycle Mounts are real life money anyway. So, instead of 1650, they are 800, uh, which isn't completely half, but you know, they're. It's a little more than half, but who cares? Again, it doesn't affect me. If you spend money on this game, there you go. You're getting rewarded for it. Uh, Call of Cthulhu. For this week only, the Chaos Forge randomizes all but the primary stat on an item. So that's what I was talking about earlier. If I want to re-roll my uh, hat because it has health regen on the second slot, uh, if this was before the update, I'd have only been able to re-roll max health percent and attack speed and i'd be stuck with that health region which i was just talking about you want to get rid of and i would kind of be screwed if i was in a radiant because then i would have to find someone else or i would have to try and sell my radiant and then build up another radiant which would make a ton of players extremely angry um so they kind of just saved their butts and made it to where this week you can re-roll your second stat so now i don't have to worry i can just re-roll my second stat into critical damage but uh you know sadly I'm going to have to now get a chance at 3, which, you know, you're going to spend a lot of tentacles. But, that's why there's this next update. Uh, tomes give 4 times as many tentacles of Cthulhu. So, if you don't already have these tomes, get them now. Um, I'll explain why. I'll, I'll give you exact numbers. So, if you want my tome guide, again, here it is. <laughs> so, Cybernetics Catalog. This gives you 15 Robo Parts at 20 Flux each, which, you know, is... Uh, around 3,000 flux, or 300 flux, I mean. Around there, I don't know exactly, because I'm not trying to, I'm trying to just like speed through this. So this is the most you can get out of anything, even the eye encyclopedia. The eye encyclopedia is worth 150 flux, this is worth uh, around 300 flux, maybe it's like 250 or something. So this is the most flux you can get out of a tome. But with the tentacle tracks, you can see it gives you one tentacle, which is 100 flux, that's why it wasn't worth it before, because it's actually one of the least valuable ones. Now it gives you four times as many. So now you get four tentacles, which is 400 flux per uh, proc. So instead of 300 flux, you're going to get 400 flux. So right now, get these tomes. Again, I'm going to go right now and after this video and buy them real quick. Even the legendary one. So instead of 20, you get 80, which is a lot of flux. So you want to do that. It is the most valuable legendary tome and the most valuable tome right now for this week only. Remember that. Um, so get it in right now. I'm helping everybody out that uh, watches these videos. Also, get 90% off. Uh, this one I don't care about because 90% is a lot. So even if I wanted to, you know, spend a dollar, I can get a lot of tentacles. <laughs> like, 10 tentacles is 50 credits. That's nothing. That's like, not even a dollar, I don't think. So, uh, it's 90% off. So if you want to buy, who cares, just buy these tentacles. Um, again, we're going to need a lot because you have to get lucky and get all three steps. Sorry about that. I'm I'm sorry. I, that's like the second time that's happened. Um, you're going to have to get all three stats what you want. So you're going to spend a lot of tentacles. So credits are, you know, this is the only time I would validate that. Um, also, invaders in U5 always drop a tentacle, which are the giants that come down from the sky. And in U6, they are guaranteed two drops this week. So if you want to farm them, you can also farm them instead of spending money. But uh, yes, let's move on. I have to scroll down a little bit. So finally, bug fixes. Uh, fix a bug with range attacks. Attacks that look like they will hit will now reliably register as hits. Um, this could be a fix to the Shadow Hunter. I don't know 100%. Shadow Hunter is a bad class in general, anyways. Um, but this might fix their bugginess a little bit. Uh, still doesn't make them a, vi a viable class, but you know, 
the people that want to play Shadowhunters, it's going to be a little bit more fun instead of just completely frustrating. <laughs> um, Tooltips, again, properly show when hovering over skills in the character sheet. If you didn't know, these guys haven't been working for a long time, and they just haven't cared, but I guess now they do. Uh, so, yes, before today, uh, you used to not be able to see what your abilities did. You could also come down here, but then this doesn't include your passive. So now you can see what your passive does, <laughs> finally. Um... It used to be in the game, and then it broke a long time ago. Uh, I've had to deal with this for making my guides, uh, but yes, they finally fixed it. Uh, fixed bug where you sometimes didn't spawn after entering an in-progress shadow tower. Uh, I don't know what that is, because you're supposed to die when you spawn in anyways um, to prevent uh, exploitation, but I don't know what that means, because I haven't that hasn't happened to me. A fixed bug where boats got stuck when colliding with land instead of sliding against it. Uh, I don't know what that means either, but finally, the profanity filter no longer applies to system messages. You will now know when you unlock an arsenal. <laughs> um, so, uh, I'll admit this is uh, Scythe Plays. He actually kind of made this statement, like, last week on his stream. Uh, that was, like, the one time I was watching his stream. That's how I know this. Uh, so, he was saying how he would just say Scythe Plays in his, uh, his system message you know, the one that pops up here with the heart of fun, or not the heart of fun, but the, uh, the little trumpet thing. <laughs> um, uh, he was talking about that, and I'm assuming someone was listening, because, you know, a lot of things that I say get fixed, and I only make videos, so I'm assuming they fixed that because of what he said, so, uh, I'm glad he said that. I don't use them personally, because I don't do giveaways or anything on my stream, so I don't really use those, but, uh, now he can type scythe plays in the system message instead of getting it blocked out like if it was a cuss word or something <laughs> but also you know that means people can put some dumb stuff up there but then the developers will just not give you any more of those trumpet things so uh, i guess it's just a win-win um, but that is it this is a very big patch so again these patch notes videos even if i speed through them like i did today uh completely ignoring math like i was just saying random numbers the entire time like estimating uh, it still goes on for a long time so uh, i hope you still enjoyed it and uh, you uh, learned something because again, I kind of gave you guys some tips throughout this video. I'll probably make more videos like guides if they are warranted, but a lot of stuff is just general knowledge, common sense um, in this patch. So there shouldn't be too many confusions. If you have any confusion, just let me know in the comments of this video. Uh, I don't think a new video talking about the updates is worth it since I just talked about all the updates. <laughs> so uh, yes, if you have any questions, just leave them down below for gear or anything you want. Uh, also, you can join my stream and I always answer you guys uh, to help you guys gear out your characters the best you can because again, I've been doing this for a very long time and I know stats like the back of my hand. Uh, but that is it. So remember, if you guys enjoy the patch notes videos and you want to see more, leave a comment or a like down below. Um, uh, but besides that, hope you guys enjoy the video.